Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with SkyBio. Uh, I was going to show a quick video of a really easy option for converting your denture scan appliance into your final uh, interim transitional hybrid. So if you follow the, the method that I recommend doing your full arch rehabs on, then you're starting from an ideal denture, right? So you've either the patient has an existing denture that's pretty good, or you've made them one. And so now you know exactly where the teeth belong. You put radiographic markers on this, you scan the patient wearing that denture with the radiographic markers, and then you scan the denture by itself. And the software enables you to pull that denture in now so that you can see exactly where um, the teeth are gonna belong. So, you know, I, I've shown in other videos how you can design your interim hybrid uh, by just going into the denture software. But again, if we've gone to the trouble of doing this, and we already had an ideally designed denture, then we know exactly where the teeth need to be. And we know that this is something that was aesthetically pleasing to the patient and functional. And so why go and reinvent the wheel? Why not just reconvert this back into the hybrid itself? And so I'm gonna show how to do that. Now, one thing that I do find useful is to uh, do a bone segmentation. This is not an absolute prerequisite, but it does allow you to be able to look at the bone uh, for reference, because when you make your temporary, you only want to keep about two to three millimeters of space between the underside of this hybrid, uh, which you're going to make more ovate in shape so that you don't have to do a lot of finishing on it, and between the bone, because again, we want to make sure that we leave just enough space for tissue, but no more. And so what I'm going to do uh, to make this happen is I'm going to go ahead and go into uh, mesh mixer with both of these files and I'm going to show you how I do that conversion. Let's go and export these. So export data. We're going to export both of these files that you see right here. And I'm going to call this denture and bone. And now I'm going to go and open that file in mesh mixer. Okay, so here we have both of those done. They exported as a single STL since I exported them simultaneously, but I, I do want to separate these out. So if you just double click on the denture or the bone, whichever one, highlight it all, you can say separate. And now these are going to be two STLs that you can toggle uh, on and off. I could have done that by just individually exporting these as well, uh, but you get the idea. And so the starting point for this is that we're going to need to uh, go ahead and cut out the palette, right? This is something you don't want to have to sit there and do chair side. I can delete that. And it would be useful for me to also be able to see where those implants are so that I know that I am going to have my bridge encompassing that. So I'm going to pull in the implant tubes. Or alternatively, you can do the abutments. This is probably a little bit more useful to be able to see. So we know that we want to be able to have our bridge um, not go too far beyond these implants. We want to keep the uh, profile on the tissue side as small as is reasonable. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of this. Select the denture. Delete. And now we can cut off any distal extensions that we're not going to need. And then we can also do the same with flanges. Now here I find it a little bit easier just to use the uh, highlighting tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to just a little bit above the teeth. and delete that. And then I'm also going to come from the inside and delete a decent portion of this as well. All right, so you're gonna have some little bits and pieces floating out here. Let's double click this, double click this, and then invert 
So modify invert, and that will deselect this and just select the floating bits and delete those. All right. The other thing that we can go ahead and do, and I need to get rid of that as well. All right. The other thing that we can do is that we can go ahead and begin smoothing out this interior surface. Again, we want to make this uh, fairly flat. Um, a little bit of concavity is okay because you're going to need to add more material after you've picked up your cylinders. So what I'm going to do is use the sculpting tools, brushes, robust smooth, and make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to just start kind of going around the edges. This does a couple of things. One, it smooths all these rough spots out because once we've designed this, we want to force the tissue to heal to this ideal shape uh, as opposed to just making it sit right on the tissue and then, you know, having to either by hand go in and reshape this um, or having to, um, you know, have a real rough and concave surface. So I'm smoothing this out, trying to get rid of a lot of the ridges and valleys. There we go. And more time. Let's get rid of a little bit more of this excess. Okay, so now I have uh, two skins uh, right here. Okay, they each have their own independent borders. And this border on the teeth surfaces is pretty rough. So I'm going to select right on that blue line. Um, and then I'm going to expand this ring a couple of times. Okay, so you can see how much has been expanded. And with that done, I'm going to optimize the boundary and then smooth the boundary. Okay, idea being that, again, this won't be so jagged. Okay, so now we have two borders. We've got the border for the teeth and the border for the intaglio. Let's go back to our select tool, make it really, really small. And what I'll do is double click right here, capturing that border. And with the tool still active, double click this border. So I have two borders selected here. I need to optimize that boundary. I'm going to once again, smooth that boundary. Except, and now you see these two joined together or I'm sorry, both highlighted. Now we want to join them. So go to edit and let's join. And now as you see, this closes this back up to where now it's all just one object. And now a little bit more sculpting, brushes, robust smooth. We can increase the size a bit. And what I want to do is go over this sharp transition edge. Let's get all this smoothed out. And then we'll do the same thing with the border down here towards the teeth. But I don't want to bleed over and smooth out my teeth. I want to maintain their shape. So I'm going to make a smaller spot size and smooth out that transition between. Now, when you do this, inevitably, there's going to be a little bit of rough, roughness to the uh, tooth surface. Because remember, this is an STL generated from DICOM, which is inherently a bit rougher. Uh, but that's okay. We don't really mind that. When you print this, that's not going to be near as um, near as pronounced a roughness as what you're seeing when you're zoomed in this much. Now let's run an analysis with the inspector, and it's going to point any holes in the mesh. We can repair those and then smooth that out as well. So we're 90% of the way there. This is a really smooth surface. It's minimized the concavity underneath. 
And if I wanted to look here at the bone, um, now I could just visually look at this and uh, inflate the underside of this to where it's in uh, closer contact with the uh, with the bone surface, right? We want to leave two to three millimeters. So let's now go to the sculpting tools and use, use the brushes. And this is the inflate tool. So I'm going to maximize uh, the size a bit and just start inflating this. My goal is not to get an absolute distance here, but more to just get rid of concavities. So you can see those concavities right here. That looks pretty good. Remember, you're probably also going to be smoothing out the bone surface and not leaving it so rough like this. So I can inflate all of this up to pretty consistent distance uh, to the bone. And that's looking nice. You do a little too much like what I think I did there. You can hold control and that becomes a deflate tool. And now I've got the distance from the bone set. Let's go back and now smooth that out even further. Again, we're really trying to make for as little uh, work on the tail end of our conversion as possible. We want this thing to pretty much be the exact shape of what we want so that when we deliver it, we can deliver it before closing the flap and then suture the tissues to this. And this will function almost like a full arch healing abutment. Uh, this is something I've kind of learned from uh, Danny Doming. He's done a lot of cases this way where he just generates the shape that he'd like his tissue to heal to. And then he sutures tissue to that, which, uh, again, it's like a full arch healing abutment. It really lets you get a nice, nice tissue surface um, that's going to be concave while your restoration is going to be convex. So this is essentially done now. The only thing that you've got left to do is to make your pickup holes. And if you want to go ahead and do that digitally, we can subtract those out. I'll show you how to do that. Your, op your other option, obviously, is just to print this as is or mill it as is, and then just go in and uh, by hand drill some holes here. You're still going to be much more precise because you know where these implants are going to end up. But let me show you how I would do this uh, digitally just to finish this video out. Let's switch over to our abutments. I've made abutments here that are seven millimeters long. We go back into our case. Remember, we know where these implants are. We can always click on an implant and say, uh, add an abutment, since I've already got one here, it's saying replace abutment. But if you choose a custom abutment, you can make this a really long length so that it sticks out of the restoration and make it whatever size you want that pickup hole to be. Again, these are large ones. I'm gonna make a seven millimeter pickup hole here. So we've done that. Those are what was exported into this. And now with this done, we're going to go one by one, select this, and let's go and separate it. I want to separate all of these into individual STLs. Okay, so select, edit, separate. Now each one of these abutments are its own STL. And one other thing that you can do, so you could right now, you could select your denture, you could now hold control and select one of these abutments and then hit Boolean difference. But I, I will tell you just something I've learned from experience is that this is a really, really dense mesh as it comes out of the software and it can make for a difficult uh, Boolean difference. You know, the, the software can kind of struggle to make that happen. And one thing that you can do to um, you know, make that a faster process is each of these individual ones, go to your edit menu and hit make solid. And now when you do that, you're going to see that this simplifies that mesh a little bit. You're not going to have such sharp corners. And this is going to be a simpler mesh, which makes for an easier Boolean subtraction. So let's do that on each of these. Select the abutment, go to edit, make solid. If it disappears on you like this, what you can do is just grab your solid accuracy, drag that up and update it. And now you see that that has come back. I don't know why it does that, but it does. So let's do that one by one. All right, so you see we've got lots and lots of objects over here in our objects browser, but the ones that are visible are the ones that have been made solid. 
So to do a Boolean difference, um, and again, you know, you could have done these all at once, but unless you've got a beast of a computer, you're gonna find it crashes. That's why it's easier to make these individuals and do these one at a time and to also uh, you make them solid instead of just the mesh as it comes out of the software. So what I'll do is I'm gonna, in the objects browser, select my denture, now control, and come and select one of these, Boolean difference. And now you see that happens really, really quickly. Let's accept it. All right, and we're just gonna proceed doing each of these now, Boolean difference. Happens really quick, and I'm gonna repeat for all of them. And that completes it. So we accept this, and this is now our final um, transitional hybrid. If you have any little specks of stuff that's uh, in there, you know, what we can do is double click this, and it's only going to select the face group. And we've got a lot of face groups here, but if you go up to modify, you can say expand connected. So what that means is it's going to expand to everything that's touching this. All right, so when I select that, now any little bits of floating material that may be internal, external, if it's not touching this, it's going to um, you know, not be selected, then I can invert and delete those, okay? And this is your final file. And so in just a mere few moments, you can now have a perfectly shaped uh, intaglio to your transitional hybrid. You know the teeth are right because they're exact replicas of that patient's denture, which you've used as a scan appliance. And you can certainly do this uh, much quicker than you can go and design um, a, a temporary hybrid from, uh, from nothing, right? If you were to go into ExoCAT or the denture module in Blue Sky or 3Shape, it's going to take you much, much longer to make this. Um, and you're still gonna you know, have to turn this on and off to reference those tooth positions. When you've got this option, this is just a much, much faster way to get to that same end result.